It's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. Maxwell House, America's favorite coffee, brings you a new series of programs featuring the domestic adventures of that lovable Mr. and Mrs. George and Gracie. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the Les Paul Trio, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. As we look in at the Burns home today, George and Gracie are just sitting down to breakfast. Boy, nothing like a cup of coffee to start the day. Warms your stomach. Uh... What's so funny? Oh, the coffee warming your tummy. <laughs> I was just thinking, first the pot warms the coffee, and then the coffee warms Never the... Never mind. <laughs> How about some cream? I'm sorry, darling, no cream. How about some butter for the toast? Oh, no butter either. You see, we're new in this neighborhood, and the milkman says that he can only take care of his old customers. <laughs> but this has been going on for three weeks now. Sorry, George. I've done my best to strike up a friendship with the milkman. I always ask how Mamie is feeling, what Werner's been doing, and if Dolores has any new boyfriends. His daughters? No, his cows. <laughs> no milk, no butter, no cream. How about bacon? Mm, the butcher just looks at me and says, Sorry, lady, you ain't an old customer. Well, I might as well go out and have breakfast. By the way, uh, where are my clean shirts? Oh, the laundry man is taking care of his old customers, too. Oh, oh. Everywhere you have to be old. George, why don't you try... Forget it. <laughs> What'll I wear? Well, I washed out your sleeveless sweater myself. I don't own a sleeveless sweater. Yes, you do. I had a little bad luck with the ringer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, kid. Darn it, this makes me sore. Well, if we want bacon and butter and laundry and things, we'll just have to get in the car and drive back to our old neighborhood where they know us. You can't even do that. The car is on its last legs. I'd be afraid to go around the block in it. Oh, it never was a very good car. Every time I drove it, a fender fell off or a headlight fell off or a bumper fell off. I yeah, know. But I must admit, they sometimes fell off the cars I hit, too. <laughs> Yeah, those old jobs just uh, wouldn't hold up. No. Why don't we buy a new one? I thought of that, but I can't get a priority. The woman at the ration board says I'm not essential. Not essential? Why, I couldn't get along without you. Gracie, she doesn't mean that. You see what... Come in. Well, hello, Meredith. Well, good morning, folks. I hope I'm not intruding. Not at all, Meredith. What's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to get some more advice from Gracie. What's Gracie been giving you advice about? <laughs> about girls. <laughs> you know how bashful Meredith is, George. Mm. Well, nothing seems to work for me. Gracie said when I was with a girl, I should talk about myself. Well, did you try that? Sure, I did. Just last night, I called on a girl, and after we'd sat there for a while, I said, uh, <clears throat> I was born in Mason City, Iowa in 1907. Oh, fine. And what did she say? She said, uh, really? And when did you die? <laughs> A fair question. <laughs> Meredith, maybe your clothes are partly to blame. Have you ever thought of dressing to attract girls? Oh, gosh, no. I pull the shade down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, wear smart clothes. Now, look at George. He dresses to show off his figure. Hey, he does have broad shoulders, all right. Well, if you think those are broad, you ought to see his blue suit. <laughs> I'll take you to meet my tailor, Mr. Russo. Oh, he's wonderful, Meredith. I went in with George to try on his new suit, and he looks just like Johnny Weissmuller. I do, honey? No, Mr. Russo does. Oh, yes, Russo. Is <laughs> well, Meredith, my advice would be... Come in. Hi, Burns. Well, hello, Bill. Hello, hello Meredith. Hello, Bill. Bill, you're the logical one to help Meredith with his problem. Problem? Yes, he's been having such a struggle with girls. Can't think of a more delightful pastime myself. <laughs> now, you misunderstand. Meredith has a struggle getting a date. 
Girls just don't fall for him. Oh. Well, let's have a look at you, Meredith. Mm hmm. Well, for one thing, you've got to stop cutting your own hair. Go to a barber. <laughs> But, Bill, they always cut it too short. Now, I'm trying to help you, Meredith. Secondly, when you're out with a girl, take off those glasses. But, gee, Bill, I couldn't have any fun if I couldn't see her. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing... Look, Look Bill. <laughs> Bill, to listen to you, you're the only guy in the world who doesn't have a problem with women. Well, don't kid yourself, George. Right now, five of my girls are mad at me. Really? Yeah. And after that big, expensive build-up, too. Champagne, candy, flowers. They spent a fortune on me. <laughs> and now all five of them have gone over to Van Johnson. Oh, Bill, there are thousands of girls in Hollywood. What do you care about five? Well, Gracie, a thing like this can grow. Pretty soon there'll be six girls in Hollywood who aren't mine. And then seven. I gotta nip this thing in the bud. Believe me, I got a problem. <laughs> Good morning, Missy Burns. Oh, hello, Mr. Postman. Good morning, fellows. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Postman. <laughs> Quite a gathering you have here. Yes, and everyone's brought a problem. How about you? No, I left my wife at home. Oh, <laughs> still having those little run-ins with the missus, huh? Yes. This morning, I was forced to raise my hand to her. She struck me. Oh, how terrible. But you shouldn't have raised your hand to her. I had to. I couldn't get up off the floor by myself. <laughs> Sounds like your wife's a little grouchy in the morning, Mr. Postman. But a lot of people are that way until they've had a cheerful cup of delicious, fragrant Maxwell House coffee. Yes, but I'm never grouchy in the morning. I wake up with a smile and a song. I feel so wonderful. I just want to take my mail bag and flit from tree to tree. <laughs> I'm glad you don't, though, Mr. Postman. You'll be bringing me some battered-looking mail. Yeah, and one battered-looking mail in the family's enough, huh? <laughs> Always Costello, never Abbott. <laughs> Say, Mr. Goodwin, hmm? do you think a cup of Maxwell House coffee might make my wife a little more pleasant in the morning? Well, that's very possible, Mr. Postman. Its friendly stimulation gives life a lift, and more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other coffee in the world. Oh, I love it. Every time you say Maxwell House, I just want to cheer. Really? Well, I don't blame you for wanting to cheer. You see, it has more flavor. More flavor in the blend because of the fine Latin American coffees, which are so skillfully combined that the result is a perfectly balanced blend. And Maxwell House... Ra, ra, ra! Just more ma! Maxwell House! Excuse me, I'm so impulsive. Well, that's okay, Mr. Postman. As I started to say, it has more flavor in the cup because of radiant roast, which uniformly develops the richness, mellowness, and full-bodied flavor of every coffee bean. Coffee at its full, flavored best. Good to the last drop. That's Maxwell House. The rickety fine... racks, rickety racks. Give me that. All right, now. Calm down, calm down, Mr. Paul. <laughs> I'd run home and fix myself a cup of Maxwell House right now, but my wife is there. She's so unpleasant. My goodness, you do have a problem with your wife. How, how do you stand it? Well, I confess, sometimes I wake up at night and think of running away. But I'll never leave her, Mrs. Burns. There's a strong chain that binds us together. What, what is it? Just an ordinary iron chain. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Now here's the famous Les Paul Trio with their latest recording arrangement of Begin the Begin.
wrong. Where? I've just discovered the biggest bargain sale in history. Really? Yes, the army is selling everything they don't need anymore. <gasps> think what we can pick up at a sale like that. Oh, I, I don't think George would like it if I brought home any soldiers. Uh, not soldiers, Gracie. They're selling all kinds of other wonderful things. Here, look at this list. All wool blankets, flashlights, girdles the army bought for their wax. Gee, flashlights and girdles. Something for George and something for me. Sure. Oh, I've needed a flashlight for years. <laughs> Come on, Gracie, get your hat. Oh, no, no, Blanche. I'm afraid I can't go with you. I, I couldn't get a penny out of George today. He's in one of those moods. You know the kind I mean. A normal one, huh? Well, he's got a reason. Because we're new in this neighborhood, the butcher won't sell us meat. The milkman won't sell us cream. The laundryman won't take our laundry. And to top it all, the ration board won't let him buy a new car. Isn't there any way you could get some money out of him? There'll never be another sale like this one. Well, of course, there is one method that's never failed with George yet. Flattery. Flattery? Well, yes. I tell him all kinds of wonderful things about himself. What a wonderful wife he has. How, <laughs> how wonderful she looks in her clothes. All kinds of wonderful things. Well, I, I think it might be wise to say a few nice things about him, too. Oh, certainly. I don't have to stick to the truth. No. <laughs> well, you better think of something fast, Gracie. Look out the window. George is coming up the walk right now. Oh, my goodness. Well, oh, I know. Jimmy Stewart has always been his favorite movie star. He thinks Jimmy is the handsomest, most charming fellow in the world. Blanche, you just take your cues from me. Oh, girls, they're just... Well, coming. of all people, welcome back to Hollywood, Colonel. <laughs> Colonel? I almost didn't recognize you. You look so different in civilian clothes. <laughs> civilian clothes? Oh, wait a minute, Gracie. There's been a mistake. This man is much handsomer than Jimmy Stewart. Yes, he is. I wonder who... Why, Blanche, it's my husband, George! <laughs> no. Yes. I'm not giving you any money, so forget it. Oh, but, George, this is a marvelous opportunity. The Army's having a big sale today. I'm not interested. The priority board just turned me down again. I've got my own troubles. Well... If you could see the list of things for sale, you'd change your mind. Uh, here you are, Gracie. Read it to him. Ten army soup kettles, capacity 500 gallons. Oh! <laughs> Must have one of those. <laughs> we might want a light snack between meals. <laughs> Fifteen thousand feet of barbed wire. Grab it, grab it, grab it. <laughs> We can string it around the house in case your mother pays us a visit. Five hundred, a hundred and five how? Uh, how stands for howitzers. That's army abbreviation. Can't imagine a home without a howitzer. George, I may be wrong, but I don't believe you're taking this seriously. Gracie, it's amazing the way you can see through me. No money, huh? Not a cent, no. <laughs> but you haven't heard the whole list. They're selling signal flags and tanks and jeeps and tents. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you say jeeps? Sure. See, right here, 50 jeeps. Sweetheart, I apologize. You're a wonderful woman. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what did I do? You solved our car problem. I'll buy a jeep and the ration board could go jump in the lake. Here, I'll write you out a check for a down payment. All right. Now, remember, all I want is a jeep. Don't get anything else. George, have I ever gone against your wishes? Yes. <laughs> have I ever tried to deceive you? Yes. Well, give me the check. You waste more time answering questions. <laughs> Hello, dear. Well, it was some sale. Really? When do I get my jeep? George, you never saw such marvelous things in your life. What bargains... The army certainly does things right. Yeah. When do I get my jeep? 
Blanche bought three dozen Captain's bars. She's, she's going to use them to pin up her baby's diapers. Oh. Is that right? Yes, that's right. When do I get my Jeep? Well, they were only 50 cents a dozen. Of course, they came with the captains removed. When do I get my Jeep? You should see the marvelous eyes you got, Al. When do I get my Jeep? Your Jeep? My Jeep. Then I bought some... Gracie, the Jeep. Jeep. <laughs> when do I get it? Well, um, I, I didn't buy the Jeep, George. You see, I kind of ran out of money. Ran out of money? What did you do with the check I gave you? Well, I, um, I bought something else with it, George. Something you'll get a great deal of pleasure out of. I was thinking only of you when I bought it, dear. What is it? A hundred pair of nylons. Oh. <laughs> a hundred pair of nylons? Uh-huh. You're thrilled, huh? <laughs> well, this is fine. I sent you out to buy a Jeep, and you come home with a hundred pair of stockings? We needed that Jeep. How are we going to get around without a car? Oh, I have that all figured out. We'll hitch rides. Hitch ride? Well, sure. With a pair of nylons and a good, strong wind, I guarantee to stop anything on the road. Oh. Here's Meredith Wilson with his chiffon arrangement of... If I loved you. I'm going right down to the Army Supply Center and cancel that order. But, George, think of my morale. For years, I've worn nothing but cotton and rayon. They looked all right to me. Oh, that's because you're a husband. You haven't looked at my legs since we were married. <laughs> I have to. Oh, yeah? Quick, how many have I got? <laughs> Three. Came closer than I thought you would have Yeah, said. it was a good guess, yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Gracie. I'm going down and get my check back. But, George, I've told everybody in town that I have nylons. I'll be the laughing stock of all the women. That's tough, kid, but there'll be no nylons delivered. Come in. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Mr. Bates, your neighborhood butcher. Oh, hello, Mr. Bates. I, uh... I brought you ham, Mrs. Burns. The finest I have in stock. Oh, how wonderful. How much is it? Oh, for you, not a penny. I, I want you to take it as a gift. Uh, a gift? Yes, uh, a little expression of goodwill. Oh, uh, by the way, I understand you uh, have a hundred pair of nylons. That's right. 
Uh, they'll be delivered here at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Splendid. My wife wears size 9. Goodbye. Well, I'll be gone. Uh-huh. Yeah. You see? The nylons did it. When I wore cotton, the best we ever got was codfish. <laughs> I can't believe it. Hello? Uh, hello, Mrs. Burns. This is Mr. Peterson, the druggist. I was wondering if you could use a few boxes of Kleenex. Well, I certainly could. Shall I come by for it? Oh, no, I'll bring it over myself. Oh, uh, by the way... Uh, they'll be here at 5 o'clock. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now we're getting some Kleenex, George. And you wanted to cancel that order. Looks like I was wrong. Well, it's not easy to be right all the time. I find it quite a strain. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Gracie. Hey, is this nylon rumor on the level? Absolutely, Bill. Well, I told those five girls who were mad at me that you might slip me a few pairs. Well, of course I will. Were they pleased? Please. Right now, they're overthrowing rocks at Van Johnson. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, come back at five o'clock and you can have them. Five pair of nylon for the prettiest legs in Hollywood, eh, Bill? Oh, no, I'm going to give them to the girls. I wear wool. <laughs> Nylons are practically magic. Oh, yeah, they solve everybody's problems. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Burns. This is Mr. Winslow, the milkman. Oh, what size does your wife wear? Nine and a half. Well, I'll take a gallon of whipping cream. Goodbye. <laughs> it's uncanny. Wave a pair of those things and you get whatever you want. Um, I wonder if Mrs. Charles Boyer would like a pair. <laughs> what she got that you want? <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. Yeah, I'm cute. <laughs> Come in. Uh, how do you do? I'm Mr. Connors, your neighborhood laundry man. You heard the rumor, huh? Yes. True? True, true, true. Good. Where will I find your soiled garments? Just Open any closet, Mr. Connors. They'll fall out. Do you suppose you could get them back in a week? A week? Step aside. I'll wash them right here. <laughs> You'll find a tub on the back porch. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Burns. Uh, this is Meredith Wilson. Oh, yes, Meredith. Say, that story about the nylons is all over town. I'm uh, sort of counting on a pair to give to a girl. Why, of course. Do you think that that might make the girls more friendly to you? Hurry and get off the phone, hot lips. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I think it might. Oh. Well, be here at five, Meredith. Goodbye. Oh, here we go again. Mrs. Burns, could I? Yes, Mr. Postman, you may have a pair. Oh, thank you. The little woman wears size 13 and a half. <laughs> well, George, why doesn't it ring? Why doesn't what ring? The telephone. It's time for it to ring. Well, what did I tell you? Hello? That was the door, Grace. Oh. Yes? Hello, I'm the lady from your ration board. Oh, yes. You're the woman who said my husband wasn't essential. Did I say that? Mm. <laughs> oh, silly me. <laughs> Here's your priority. I ran all the way over here with it. I just ruined my stockings, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Be here at five. <laughs> everybody. Quiet down, everybody. Calm down and stay in line. The army truck just arrived, and Gracie is outside getting the nylons. Here she is. Oh! Uh, well, uh, it, uh, it was nice seeing all you folks. Uh, run along now and come visit us again sometime. But, Gracie, all these... What happened? Weren't they genuine nylons? Oh, yes, the finest nylon that can be made. Weren't there a hundred? Exactly a hundred. Well, then, what's the matter? The army abbreviation, you see, on the list it said a hundred pair nylon. Well? Well, how was I to know that P-A-R stood for parachute? Parachute? Oh, no. Hey, Meredith. Mm. 
When you play that romantic Latin American music, it makes me think of something mighty choice. A beautiful dark-eyed senorita, huh, Bill? Oh, no. I think of those choice Latin American coffees that go into the blending of Maxwell House. Me? Think of a girl? Oh, Meredith. Oh, sorry, Bill. And you know the way you blended your musical instruments into that tango is just the way the makers of Maxwell House blend those fine Latin American coffees. They use Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other fine Latin American coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. And when these coffees are skillfully combined, the result is a perfectly balanced blend. America's number one coffee choice, Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. And here's Gracie. Uh, We're a little late, folks. Good night. Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Until next Thursday, then, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Stay tuned to this station because Dinah Shore's open house is coming on in just a second. Dinah's special guest tonight is Jetty Colonna. Jello pudding tonight. It tastes like grandma's only more so. You ain't kidding, that's right. And, and just, just the jello, jello six delicious, locked in flavors can't be beaten. So the proof of jello pudding's in the eating. The jello twins are hard to find, but keep on looking in your store. When sugar shortages are over, there'll be more. Just, just the taste, taste of jello pudding or of jello, and you know it's the one and only J E L L O. This is the National Broadcasting Company.